You know, a short while back, we did a feature on the great Troy Gamble for uh, the Vancouver Canucks, uh, our good follower of the channel, uh, Matt Grant, uh, enjoyed it. But he also said, why don't you do something on another great goalie in that Vancouver system of the late 80s, early 90s? And he was uh, also had a great career in junior. So today we're talking about the guy who was everywhere and uh, was very impressive in the Russian Super League for a while, the very underrated and the very talented Mike Falcon. Now, born Michael Fountain in North York, Ontario, uh, played in the NHL with the Canucks, the Hurricanes, and Senators. He played numerous campaigns in the AHL, <coughs> as well as in the Russian Super League. Since retiring as a player, he became an assistant coach for Team Canada's very talented pair of hockey squad. Now, he grew up in a small town of Gravenhurst, Ontario. As a 15-year-old, the Fountain played junior C hockey for the Huntsville Blair McCanns in the 88-89 season. He was named Rookie of the Year and made the All-Star team. Fountain was so good, he was drafted in the 15th round of the 89 OHL draft by the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. After being uh, drafted by the Sioux, he was inside to the Chatham Micmacs Junior B Hockey Club in 89-90, where he was teammates with future NHL players Todd Warner and Brian Wiseman. The Micmacs won the Western Junior B title that year. Now, he played two seasons of junior hockey in the OHL with the Oshawa Generals, who was named to the OHL first All-Star team in 92. He was also one of the netminers for the Canada at that year's World Juniors. Following his junior success, he was selected 45th overall in the 92 NHL entry draft by the Vancouver Canucks. Very strong number two uh, uh, draft that year for all NHL players. Now, he turned pro for 93 and was signed to the Hamilton Canucks of the AHL. He played for the Seacurs Crunch from 94 to 97 with a goals against average of 3.2. He established himself as one of the top goalies outside the NHL with a standout 95-4 campaign, during which he led the AHL with 70 appearances, 34 wins, and four blanks, and he was named to the league's second All-Star team. However, due to the numbers game in Vancouver and the other teams he played for, cracking the NHL would be difficult for Fountain. Just as it appeared, he was ready to succeed Kay Whitmore as the backup to Kirk McLean with the Canucks. The, key, the team acquired highly rated Corey Hirsch, who passed Fountain on the depth chart and was promoted directly to the NHL. Now, Fountain proceeded to toil for two more seasons in the NHL without getting an NHL opportunity. He was finally able to make his NHL debut midway through the 97 season and did so in a memorable style. He became the 19 goalie in NHL history to record a shutout in their first NHL game, doing so against the New Jersey Devils, and nearly scored a goal as well, sending the puck just a few feet wide of an empty net late in the contest. He finished the year with a 2-2 two two record and a 3.43 goals against average in six appearances. So things were looking up. He then left Vancouver to sign as a free agent with Carolina for 98, he then signed with the Senators in 99 and spent two seasons with the organization as their third goalie, appearing in one NHL game in both years while performing well in the, the IHL and setting standards for Griffin's goalies. Uh, no Griffin's goalies has attained since. He was named to the IHL All-Star team in the 21 campaign, two, 2001 campaign. Now, in 2001, he left North America to sign the Russian Super League with H.C. Lada Tagliati and led the RHL in goals against average in the first season. He was also set the all-time Russian shutout record with 14 blanks and 43 starts. After two years in Russia, he signed in Germany for 2004 with the Islorn Roosters. He returned to Russia in 2005, playing for Traktor Ch Chilabinsk, where he won the Russian title and was named MVP before rejoining Lada in 2006. Now, Fountain's very, very limited, but very, very uh, recognized NHL career. He went 2-6 and in 11 games with Carolina, Vancouver, and Ottawa with a 3.47 goals against average. Again, 89 in Huntsville, 18-3-2. and two. Uh, 90 with the, the Micmacs, 21 games, 3.65 average. Sault Ste. Marie in 91, split time between that and Oshawa with uh, 22 wins, 7 losses, 1 tie. He also went 1-4 in the playoffs. Oshawa again, 18-13-6 in 92, with the Hamilton Canucks in uh, 93, 2-8 record and 7-5-1 and with the Canadian National Touring Team. Now, in 94, with the Hamilton Canucks, again, that super 70-game season, 34-28-6, with four shutouts, and he went 0-2 in the playoffs. So 73 contests that year. 
95 in Syracuse of the AHL, 25, 29, 7, 61 games. 96 with Syracuse, 54 games, 21, 27, and 3, and 8 and 7 in the postseason. Vancouver in uh, 97, 2 and 2 with a 3.43, with Syracuse, 8, 14, and 2 in 25 games. 95, he went 0 and 3 with uh, Carolina, uh, 3.68 average, but with the Beasts of New Haven, he went 25, 19, and 5 in 50 contests. 99 with the Beasts, 23, 24, and 3. 2000, one game with Ottawa. Uh, 3.87 average in 16 minutes. Also played with Grand Rapids that year, 21, 7, and 4, three shutouts. 01 with Ottawa, a one loss, 3.07 average. Uh, Grand Rapids, 52 games, 34, 10, and 6. Now with Lada, he played 30, uh, 43 games in 02, 14 shutouts, 21 games in 03, five blanks. Uh, 04 with the Roosters, 34 contests. He played with the Mortar City Maniacs of the UHL in 05. 06, back with Russia with Tractor Trip Links. 39 games with Lada. 07, 08, 09, 16, 54, and 14 uh, games. So uh, durable, uh, played the angles quite uh, quite strong, wasn't scared to, uh, you know, uh, play the best of his game. Kind of undersized for a modern goalie, 6'1", 180. But like I said, a very, very talented guy. And you're playing 20, 25 years, the best of junior C, junior B, uh, major junior, IHL, AHL, NHL, Russia, uh, different European leagues. But what really stands out for me, ladies and gentlemen, it was still an era where you graduate from junior C to junior B to major junior to the NHL. And that's how that's how quick it was. Uh, everybody knew that Bafalkin had talent. But like I said, if... A team was ready to have a strong number three or a partial number two. He would be the guy. In the modern NHL, he would probably show it up in Seattle, Las Vegas expansion, and he just a little bit too early. But I think Vancouver should have gave him a better chance, but maybe he thought either he was a number one or a number two and nothing else. If he couldn't be number one, number two, he would just basically a spare, and that was disrespectful of his talent. I first heard about him in uh, the hockey news, when he said he was going to be the future of Vancouver's goaltending because of that second round pick. He didn't waste that pick on Falcon. He had that much talent, but it just, you know, Vancouver had a lot of young goalies here in the late eighties, early nineties, who were just basically a numbers game. Like Montreal was Montreal had six or seven quality goalies and didn't keep many of them to make room for Theodore. He left a lot of goalies go. So that was a time when Vancouver was a goalie center for very strong young what he called uh, OHL and the WHL goalies. It was it was a it was a factory for good quality goalies. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you're doing here, we're a Vintage Vancouver Canuck podcast. Let us know what a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.